if I can just read the webcasting introduction. Uh, I would like to remind everyone present that this is a hybrid meeting and will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or other such use by third parties. Therefore, by participating in this meeting, you are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of these, those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. If any public speakers on MS Teams do not wish their, to have their image captured, they should ensure that the, their video setting throughout the meeting is turned off and set to audio only. Please also be aware that if te technical difficulties interrupt the meeting, this cannot be overcome and this cannot be overcome, I may need to adjourn the meeting. Members, once again, as always, I just remind you when you're speaking to turn your microphones on and when you're finished to turn them off. Thank you very much. If we could go to apologies for absence. Um, there are no apologies. Thank you. Any declarations of interest? None? Minutes of last meeting, can I confirm those as being correct? Correct. Thank you. Are there any additional reports of portfolio holders? No? Oh, Councillor Williamson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to mention the weekend uh, events, I checked with um, the um, officers today. There were no real problems with policing or anything going on with remembrance parades. And there was one minor event in Chippewa, but um, I think it just reinforces what a good community we have here in Epping Forest. Absolutely. And uh, Councillor Patel. Thank you, Chairman. I would just a uh, quick mention about the uh, Diwali celebrations we had on the weekend in the council offices, and it was amazing and well attended. Um, and yeah, I definitely learned a few stuff myself, so it's quite nice. To, <laughs> it's quite nice, to, uh, nicely organised. So yeah, thank you to um, Mr. Chairman for organising that. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's very good. Okay, moving forwards, item six: public questions and requests to address the cabinet. There are none. Thank you. Then we go on to the report of overview and scrutiny on item seven. Councillor Wixley online. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Right, thank, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I, I can report on meetings that we had. So the last overview and scrutiny <coughs> committee meeting was on the 24th of October. And I believe the draft minutes for that will be on the website tomorrow. Um, there was to have been the joint meeting of overview and scrutiny and cabinet chairman tomorrow, but that has now been postponed. Uh, we've got an overview and scrutiny meeting next Tuesday, the 21st of November, which I believe is going to focus on Qualis. And uh, <clears throat> two days later, on uh, Thursday, the 23rd of November, is an all member briefing, and that's relating to uh, the changes at Whips Cross Hospital. And, uh, and, a, and yet another meeting is on the ONS meeting, and it's a joint ONS and Cabinet meeting to discuss the budget, and that is on Tuesday, the 12th of December, and that isn't a public meeting, as I understand it. So that's my report on meetings. Thank you, Councillor Wixley. And if I could just highlight the meeting you just mentioned, which is the overview and scrutiny and Cabinet meeting to discuss the budget on the 12th of December. Um, I would ask that all members make their, their efforts to be at that meeting. It's, it's very important. Um, and uh, the budget, as always, uh, is of interest to, or should be of interest to all members of the Council, and would certainly recommend that members attend that evening. Um, Thank you very much, Councillor Wixley. Um, if we then move on to item eight, the local council tax support scheme, Councillor Phillip. Thank you, Chairman. And it was the local council tax support scheme that was discussed at the last meeting of view and scrutiny that uh, Councillor Wixley mentioned. And uh, the draft minutes are actually available within mod.gov already. Uh, I was very pleased to see the uh, significant uh, endorsement of this local council tax support scheme by uh, Overview and Scrutiny welcoming uh, the changes. Uh, Chairman, this has been out to consultation. 
over three quarters of the respondents were in favour of this change. It makes it simpler. It makes it more reliable for the people who are claiming this benefit. It gives them uh, confidence that they will know what they're getting in terms of their benefit going forward, unlike at the moment when there can be a significant number of changes throughout the year. This has a number of benefits. One, it makes it easier uh, for us to administer. Two, it makes it easier for our residents to make use of. So all in all, this is a win-win situation. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Councillor Philip. And it came through very strongly with the endorsement of um, Scrutiny uh, Committee. Um, and I think the key thing is, as you said, it's a simplification of the system that we've been using, but it's also a fairer system. Um, which will benefit people. Members of the Cabinet, any questions for Councillor Phillip? No? Councillor Phillip? In that case, Chairman, can I propose that we take Recommendation 1 and not Recommendation 2? Okay. Members, can we agree those recommendations? Agreed. Thank you very much. Then if we move on to Item 9, Housing Allocation Scheme, Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman, and hopefully members had an opportunity to read this paper. Uh, and, and in short, there's not much change to the housing allocation scheme that we put in place a year ago. Um, you'll see that recommendation one to four is, is no change in the policy already in place, with recommendation 5A and 5B in relation to the move from a flat to um, a house and tenants' rights in relation to that. Um, we, we put a new housing um, allocation scheme in place a year ago, as, as the report would suggest, and actually, largely, it, it's, it's gone quite well. Obviously, we're always under, under pressure um, in terms of we've got about 1,600, I believe, on the housing list, and it, it's always is a pressure, particularly um, with, although we've kept low in comparison with other districts and boroughs, um, but increased pressures around homelessness. So I'm happy to take any question on the detail of the report, and I've got Sergit here um, to support me. Actually, one point I would make, actually, in terms of what um, kind of information I've received um, from, from members and residents, the only slight concern that has been expressed is around the kind of overcrowding piece, um, and that's in relation to perhaps a mother and child living in, in, in a one-bed flat or a, um, a family with an adult child living um, t together. Um, and, and what I would say in relation to that, with the kind of family with adult child um, scenario, I think that does reflect the private market um, with many kind of um, young adults living at home, probably well into their 30s now. So this bit isn't as problematic, although I did have quite extensive conversations around the, the, the um, kind of um, one parent, one child um, scenario with officers. So based on this and discussions with scrutiny, this is in place at the moment, but obviously uh, we continue to review and look at the policy and see how it, how it beds in in the long term. But overall, um, the, the new policy seems to have um, been, been positive um, and we continue to, to manage our um, allocations. But as I say, always um, a lot of people um, to, to house in the district. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Councillor Whitbread, if there's no questions, would you like to put your recommendations? Thank you, and happy to put forward recommendations 1 to 5B. Thank you. Can we take those as being agreed? Agreed. Okay, we then move on to item 10, which is Harlow Garden Town Governance Joint Committee. Councillor Bedford. Thank you. Uh, members will be aware that it's an ambitious growth and regeneration uh, agenda around Harlow, which includes up to 23,000 new homes, of which a minimum 3,900 new homes are planned across three strategic neighbourhood master planning sites in Epping Forest, as identified in our recently adopted local plan. Epping Forest District Council is already working in informal partnership with East Hearts, Harlow, Hearts County Council and Essex County Council to progress the overarch over, overarching vision. But this sometimes means that decisions have to be taken five times. Following agreement by the leaders and the lead members at the 2021 HGGT board, meeting that HGGT members needed to evolve to be more fit for purpose as the project moved to project delivery, a report setting out the future of governance and partnership framework was reported to the HGGT Board on the 17th of July this year. 
It's recommended a joint committee to be established, which was agreed at that meeting, as was the arrangement set out in the Inter-Authority Agreement, the IAA. A joint committee will demonstrate unified leadership and oversight of the comprehensive agenda, as well as the transparency for residents and others. It is recommended that Cabinet agrees to the setting of a joint committee and to transfer some decision-making powers to the HGG Joint Committee, as defined in the Inter-Authority Agreement appendices to this report. Please note that this would not include any planning or highway decision-making powers, which will remain with the relevant authority. The agreement sets out the role of the Joint Committee, its areas, its membership, chairing, voting, scrutiny, accountable body review and exit arrangements, which I think are all practical and sensible. And the main reasons are uh, outlined there on page 81, which is the reasons for the proposed decision. So it's in order to provide consistent, transparent arrangements for the consideration of the HGGT matters, to secure delivery of the HGGT and to secure the wider regeneration of Harlow, to ensure that appropriate legal protocols are in place and to ensure that the views of Epping Forest District Council are given appropriate consideration. Chairman, that's, uh, that sums it up, and I put forward the three recommendations on page 80. Thank you. Members, any questions? Councillor Phillip? Marjorie Hopper. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I have, I have read through this. I, I did look at some of the figures that were involved, not surprisingly, mm. and just concerned that some of the numbers in there are at a level that are not um, approvable at a cabinet level and would require council approval. Do we need to take this to council for uh, confirmation of what we're doing to make sure that we're legally covered uh, in terms of delegations? I've, I'm not sure, but I think it was looked at previously. Oh. I'll pass that over to uh, Mr Richardson for a final comment. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we, d we did look into the issue of whether this needs uh, full council uh, sign-off, um, but it was felt that um, um, it's mainly an extension of the board facilities rather than to delegate powers bestowed upon them. So uh, all the planning decisions, budgets, etc will be taken by individual authorities so it was felt that I took advice from our legal representatives that we could sign this off at cabinet level what I would say Essex County Council have that same opinion um, but Harlow and S uh, Hertfordshire County Council are taking it to full council so if there is a if there is a bit of concern then we, it could possibly go to full council, but we've had we've taken that advice that we feel it needs to go no further than cabinet. Okay, Councillor Phillip. I think I personally would be happy if we just had uh, council look at this simply because I can't find it now, but somewhere I'm sure I saw a reference to uh, a two million capital number. Now that is not within cabinet's level. So I think it might be um, just just advisable for... I, I don't see a problem with it. I think it, what we're doing here is exactly the right thing. I just want to make sure that we are completely clear about the, the rules. Thank you. Councillor Bedford. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, I agree then. We'll, we'll, we'll pass this back to full council for final approval. OK. Any other members? Right, in that case, we'll take the recommendations as set out with an additional recommendation that um, forwards this up to full council for final approval. Can we take that as being agreed? Agreed. We then move on to item 11, the Northfield Bassett Master Plan Allocation Site. Councillor Bedford. Thank you, Leader. Uh, this report is to bring the draft Northfield Bassett Strategic Master Plan Framework to Cabinet for approval for formal consultation. The development of the Northfield Bassett Strategic Master Plan uh, Fund uh, responds to the adopted Epping Forest District Local Plan 2011 to 2033, allocation which is in policy P6 Northfield Bassett. The Northfield Bassett Master Plan area forms one of the allocated strategic master plan sites where the need for a strategic master plan framework is identified. Following the requirements in policies SP2 placemaking and P6 Northfield Bassett, 
a strategic master plan has been developed for the allocated strategic area. The North Weald Bassett is allocated for a minimum of 1,050 homes, a local centre including retail, community and sporting facilities, appropriate provision of health facilities and five traveller pitches. The site is also allocated for the provision of education provision, including early years and primary school places. Adequate levels of public open space to be provided on the site, including a suitable alternative natural green space called a SANG. The Northfield Bastic uh, SMF has been subject to extensive informal public consultation spanning between 2018 and the summer of 2023, where local community groups such as the Northfield Neighbourhood Plan Steering Group, the Queen's Memorial Fields Trust, the Northfield, Bas Northfield Pas Parish Council, St Andrew's School and the general public were being, have been consulted. The SMF has been developed collaboratively and has been reviewed by the local planning authority and Essex officers as part of the planning performance agreement process. The master plan has also been reviewed by the council's quality review panel now three times. The formal consultation will run over eight weeks to take consideration of Christmas and the new year period to provide public statutory consultees and the general public with ample time to review and comment on the SMF. Any minor amendments, including further accessibility requirements, are requested to be authorised by the Planning Services Director in conjunction with myself as portfolio holder. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much. Members? Councillor Phillip? Um, yeah, I, I, I think this is a very good piece of, piece of work. I just wonder whether, given... Uh, the dates in January, with the 5th of January being at the end of the first week, whether it's worth just pushing it to the Monday of the following week, just gi given the disruption we sometimes get in terms of uh, both the Council and in terms of post, etc., over that time. So if we just pushed out the following Monday, I think that costs us one day in terms of processing internally, and I think that might just sound a little better. Councillor Bedford. Thank you. Yeah, no, I agree. We'll push it to the Monday. It's not a problem. Thank you. Okay. Members, any other questions on this particular piece? Councillor Whitehouse. Thanks, Chairman. I just wanted to ask about the, the unresolved elements, and it wasn't obvious to me what the process was for resolving those unresolved elements, and if just get clarification on that, please. Councillor Bedford. Uh, put that over to Mr Richardson. Thank you. Um, I'll, if you don't mind, Chairman, I'll pass over to Rick Schooneman. Rick's the yeah. author of the report, and there's more knowledge in this in detail. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, so yes, there is a, a, a number of, of uh, matters still to be refined further. Um, one is uh, uh, the aspect of sustainability to make it, um, make the project overall um, respond better to, to upcoming kind of sustainability standards, um, including the new Essex. Um, net zero carbon targets. <clears throat> um, there's some minor aspects of um, of the urban design itself, where basically we're just pushing for a, a, an even more landscape-led master plan. Uh, but that's mainly the, the the two issues that we are sure we can uh, develop further by by the time we want to go to endorsement. Thank you. So it's what we're saying is that when the post-consultation submission version of this comes back to Cabinet, we'd expect those things to be resolved in, the, in those versions. OK, thanks. OK. Members, no other questions. I'm going to take this to recommendations with that minor change suggested by Councillor Phillip. Are you happy with that amendment, Councillor Bedford? Yes. OK. Members, you've got before you the recommendations with a slight extension just for, through that first week of January, which makes perfect sense. Are we happy to agree those? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. We then move on to item 12, quarter two, budget monitoring. Councillor Phillip. Uh, thank you, Chairman. So this is the uh, first two quarters of this financial year. Um, key points to pull, pull out is that we're looking at an overspend of a one, about 1.3 million this year. So that's taking us up virtually to a 19 million pound spending. Um, looking at the areas that are driving it, uh, we're now ex only expecting just over a million pounds this year from our planning applications, 
uh, which is a shortfall, again, of almost a million pounds. That's quite a big hole in what we're doing. Uh, I'm sure, uh, as I've spoken to uh, our portfolio holders and the director, that we're doing everything we can to reduce that gap, but we have to be aware that it is there. We do still have, as we did in quarter one, a, an issue with high interest rates, um, although fortunately it doesn't look as if they're going up at the moment. Um, but we are still making significant uh, amount of margin on the Qualys loans, even though the rates are now higher. Uh, we have overspends forecasted both in customer services and commercial and technical. But we should also notice that there is still a residual risk on employee costs. Uh, with a, we're moving towards an agreement on that, but we assumed uh, in the budget uh, settlement of 4%, uh, the offer on the table is 5%, so that will be a shortfall. Um, we have some uh, surplus income potentially coming from business rates, uh, but we are looking at a shortfall to match it's not as big as that, but against that of uh, money from the council tax sharing agreement. Just need to pull members' notice to the reserves that we have in the general fund. Uh, we had a contingency balance of 3.2 million uh, at our budget. If this outturn continues, that will take us down to 1.8 million, which is significantly below the 4 million that we that Mr. Small determines is the minimum reasonable to have there. From a capital spending point of view, uh, both the HRA and the General Fund Capital Programmes are underspending at the moment. Um, one of the big uh, drivers in the General Fund is the Qualys loans, and in the HRA it's development on housing that is key. If we go on to page 169, we can see there's a forecast overspend in quality income uh, because we've been uh, accelerating those but less than assumed in the budget but our margins are less. We have a similar sized overspend uh, on the HRA recharges, uh, just over 300,000 there. Um, and I already referenced both the commercial, uh, customer services and the commercial and technical overspends. The detail of that is on page 169. But on the positive side, we have underspends uh, of near of just over 400,000 in community well-being. Uh, we have uh, corporate services underspend of almost a quarter of a million. Uh, the variance there is uh, ICT of nearly 200,000. Uh, we have an underspend as well in housing and property, primarily due to vacant posts. Um, I've already drawn attention to our staffing budgets, but that is a risk not only for this year, but in the context we're already talking about next year budget, that is a big uh, risk. As I've said before, our staff costs are our largest cost overall, and any change in that has a significant impact. More detail in the, on the general serve, reserve Contingency balances on page 172, but we do also have uh, a significant amount of money in uh, general fund earmarked reserves, the detail of which is actually called out on page 173. When we come to the housing revenue account, we're showing a slight deficit of the year of uh, £13,000. Key parts are an overspend on repairs and maintenance, driven a lot because of the void cost increased number of voids over what we expected, um, an underspend on our receipts and uh, our interest in receipts and balances, and other details called out on page 175. I won't spend much time tonight on the capital programmes, other than to say both of them are underspending at this, um, at this time. Commercially and technically, we're underspending um, on the waste management depot for North Weald Airfield. That's because we think, because of the scheduling of that, and in corporate services and ICT uh, underspend. Touching again on the, the housing development on the capital side, uh, in terms of acquisitions of houses, both uh, from Collis and also in terms of their own house building, both of those are behind schedule. 
and we have an underspend predicted on the capital works, uh, and that's tying in to do the with the work currently going on to the, co the council's uh, stock condition survey. Uh, some good news to call out, I think, uh, once we get to page 181, we can see we're managing to pay 84% of our invoices within 30 days. Uh, but do note as well, it's actually better than that because we time from the invoice date, not actually from when we receive it. Um, and pulling out as well the sundry debts uh, which have up until recently been the responsibility of individual departments. We've now consolidated that. We can see that the average age of the sundry debts is dropping, as is the amount uh, of money outstanding, and we will continue to work on that. One word, slight word of warning, um, our council tax collection is down this year from last year. Not a lot, only 0.12 of a percent, but every little bit counts there and we can see a significant uh, reduction in our business rates of around about uh, 4 to 5 per cent. There is a description of the prudential indicators and where we are on page 183 through 185, and the HRA indicators following that. The detail of the budgets are on page 188 to 190. Chairman, it's a gloomy picture but it's not anywhere like as bad as it might be. It does throw into stark relief the work that we need to do to get to a point where we have a balanced budget for next year. But I'm happy to take questions on this. Thank you very much, Councillor Phillip. Members, any questions? I know we've gone through this many times already, um, which is important to us. I think you're right to call out at the very end, Councillor Phillip, the situation that this puts us in for next year's budget and the importance of that scrutiny and cabinet meeting that we mentioned earlier on this evening on the 12th of December, um, where we hope as many members as possible partake in, because in previous years, uh, scrutiny hasn't always engaged as well as it should have done um, with uh, <coughs> the budget making process. Um, members, no questions for Councillor Phillip this evening? Councillor Kay. Yes, there we go. Right. Um, yeah, it's just uh, for my benefit, uh, clarity on the interplay between the general reserve and the earmarked reserves. Um, what makes an earmarked reserve and what makes the general reserve? And is the general reserve a reserve for the reserves? How does it work? Councillor Philip. So how does the reserve become an earmarked reserve? Well, the simple answer is we earmark it. <laughs> we set it aside for a particular purpose. A general reserve is money that we have in reserve which hasn't been earmarked for something particular. Um, clearly, the general reserve is more flexible in terms of helping us deal with situations. Earmarked reserves tend to be when you have got something that you're going to do and you're setting aside the money to allow you to do it. If push came to the shove, we could always look at earmarked reserves and say, is that still sufficient uh, sufficiently important for us to continue earmarking it for that. I sincerely hope we don't have to get to that point because we made good decisions as why we're going to earmark things. Thank you, Councillor Kane. Yeah, just to um, finish on the point, so the general reserve target of four million is what our Section 151 officer recommends is appropriate for the size of um, budget that we have, yeah? Councillor Phillip. Exactly, and uh, I can always pass to our Section 151 officer if you want more details about why he decides 4 million. But it has been 4 million for quite a while. Uh, for a long time, we were well above that and did get questions from our auditors as to why we were so much above it. Um, I would dearly like, given our current struggles with uh, our auditor, to get the <coughs> audits through and actually approved and preferably without where we're doing at the moment, which is taking hindsight as a major factor into uh, what's going on. For example, looking at the RAC issue that we had uh, in the country in 
August, and then saying, well, what does, how does that affect what we did and said in, in 2020? Not convinced that's a great way of doing audits. But we, we're, we don't want to be a point with our reserves where we're significantly that, below that four million because it does put us at sufficient risk because it doesn't give us the opportunity to actually make use of some of those reserves to balance a budget. So if we can get back to our four million, and that's partly what we need to be looking at in the budget coming up, is to start to pay back into that reserve so that we have in the future the flexibility we've had in the past. How far we can go this year, I think, may be a moot point, but we need to be moot showing that, that our intent is to get back to that level, um, not least so that uh, Mr Small can sleep at night, even if he's not going to be able to eat his Christmas dinner because of the budget. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Councillor Wixley. Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this isn't really my area, but um, this £4 million that we should have as a reserve, uh, presumably we should be looking at having more than that to take into account inflation. I just wonder if Mr Small or Mr or Councillor Phillip can advise on that. Councillor Phillip, good question. So, no, £4 million is the target, and it's based on a whole number of factors in terms of what we're what we're likely to spend, how much money we're likely to bring in. It's in the reserve is there to allow us to operate uh, given a certain amount of uh, failure in other areas. Uh, I'm sure if in the future the numbers get to a sufficiently higher level than we are at the moment in terms of both our, our council tax, in terms of our business rates take, etc., <coughs> then Mr Small would consider raising £4 million as, as the target for us. At the moment, four million is a target that is so far out of my reach uh, with the current budget that uh, I would be very grateful if Mr. Small didn't raise it for next year. Thank you. Members, you've got this report before you for noting and, and the recommendations contained therein. Can we take those as being agreed? Agreed. Thank you. So there's no any other business. Um, therefore, we come to the end of tonight's meeting. Thank you very much.